Hi, my name is Darian St. Martin and welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things English and IELTS. Today's video is a continuation of my top 10 tips series where I share my personal advice for tackling each of the IELTS sections. This episode is all about reading. Let's make sure we are fully prepared for this module. I got 9 and I am sure it won't be a problem for any of you to develop a working strategy that will boost your confidence and results. Now, tip number one is fundamental yet simple. Start your reading module from skimming the text. Have you heard about scanning and skimming? Use them to your own advantage. First, let's break down the difference. Skimming goes first and it means a very quick read just to get the general understanding of what the main ideas of the text and its paragraphs are. I always skim an article before going to the questions. I read carefully the title and then very quickly read the first and last sentences of each paragraph to outline the main characteristics of the text and understand its layout. The first sentence of a paragraph is usually the topic sentence that tells us what the next chunk of the text is about, so it's quite valuable. Sometimes the topic sentence is placed at the end and this is why we ought to be cautious. I never spend more than 2-3 minutes on this activity. While skim reading, I also underline any keywords or phrases I think may be important for answering questions. Tip number 2. Go to the questions after skimming. Answers in the text are usually located in the same order as questions are, so it's a good idea to read questions in small chunks and then go back to the article to find answers. At this point, skimming has helped us to understand what the article is about and what ideas its paragraphs convey, so it's much simpler to work with questions now because we are more or less at ease with the text's outline and generally understand where to look for answers. Tip number three, train your speed reading techniques. You have only 60 minutes to accomplish the reading module consisting of three passages with no additional time to transfer your answers, which means you are left with approximately 16 minutes to read each text and answer questions. Without speed reading, you will most likely fail this challenging task. There are lots of speed reading courses and trainings available online. Just Google them and choose whichever seems the most promising or comfortable to take. I personally read so fast that I'm able to finish all three passages and questions in 50 minutes and I always read them very attentively, never jumping from a paragraph to another and sometimes even rereading parts. Because my philosophy is simple. Since I paid a lot of money for the test, around 300 US dollars, I had better read everything there is and make sure I am confident in my answers. I don't want to be careless and make mistakes. However, I know that there are some people who don't read whole passages and it works for them as well. Tip number four. Use scanning to quickly locate factual information. Scanning is another technique that is useful to quickly go through the text like a scanner in an attempt to find very specific information like certain names, dates or numbers. While scanning, you are not even trying to understand the idea of a passage. You are merely rushing through the text to locate the data that is specifically asked for. By the way, as usual, in my top 10 tip series, I have prepared a great guide with frequent IELTS reading mistakes for you absolutely for free. It is super simple to get your hands on it. Just follow me on Instagram and send a direct message with a key phrase, reading mistakes. Then I'll send you back the link to the guide. This PDF contains common mistakes and clear guidelines as to how to avoid them. I'm sure it's going to be fruitful for your preparation. Tip number five, anticipate answers. This is a strategy that saves so much time in reading and listening. By the way, if you are interested in watching the top tips episode about listening, click on the info card here. Anticipation is when you read a question and then try to predict what might be the answer. 
However, don't use your previous knowledge on the subject when anticipating an answer. It may be tempting to do so, but this may lead you to faulty conclusions. Considering that you read questions after skimming, the skimming must be profound enough to give you information sufficient for guessing what the answers might be or where exactly in the text to look for them. So my strategy is to read questions in chunks and think what exactly I should search for in the text. Is the answer going to be a date, a name, a place? Do I remember this being covered in the text or is it just unrelated to the passage? You know, I think that the biggest problem people have with IELTS reading is that they are not used to being analytical with what they read in their daily lives. And analytics is what enables anticipation. Tip number six. Don't be afraid of unfamiliar words or a new topic. Remember, IELTS assesses your ability to navigate yourself abroad, especially with difficult texts that might cover any random topic. It is absolutely normal to come across new words while reading. I dare say up to 10 new words in a passage is okay. This is the intention of the test organizers, to put you into a real-life situation when you may have to deal with a passage or article about a topic you are not an expert in and vocabulary you might not know thoroughly and still understand what it is about. However, strive to reduce the number of unknown words. Naturally, you can't be an expert in everything. When I was taking the text, I got a passage about the behavior of ants and astrology. I'm not a professional in any of these fields. However, I managed to score 9.0 in reading and answer all the questions correctly. Tip number seven. Learn more about all types of questions and tasks you may encounter on IELTS reading. There is a certain set of questions you might see on your test, like true false not given, multiple choice questions, summary completion, filling blanks, etc. It is a good idea to learn all of them so that you don't feel lost during the test, thinking, okay, what should I do with this matching heading tasks? You must know a clear way of tackling all of them and waste no time trying to work out an approach. You will find the majority of the question types explained on my channel in this step-by-step -step tutorials, so make sure to check them out. And remember, there is no single strategy that works for all. It is much more sensible to try different ways of solving questions and then figure out on your own what brings the best results for you. In other words, make sure to practice doing lots of reading tests. You'll know where your strengths and weaknesses are, develop strategies that prove effective and reduce anxiety by coming prepared. And if you need personal guidance and assistance from me, definitely check out the Rocket IELTS course that is very comprehensive and covers all the modules. All the details about it are in my website. The link is below in the description. Tip number eight. Spelling in your answer sheet matters. There is nothing more frustrating than scoring less than you could just because of low spelling, is it? Imagine you've spent so much time practicing different question types, learning new vocabulary, improving grammar, and honing your speed reading skills, all to make a silly spelling mistake and get stripped of hard-earned marks. I wouldn't wish this to anyone. So please take time to learn correct spelling. This is not difficult at all. You must expand vocabulary in preparation to the reading module by reading texts on different topics. And while learning new words, be extra attentive to their spelling. That's all. But believe me, it spares so much trouble. It is also important to note here that you are allowed to capitalize words however you like in the answer sheet. Just try to stick to the same format once you've chosen it. Tip number nine. Don't rely on keywords. They are not a panacea when it comes to answering questions. Yes, keywords help you build the outline of the passage in your head, understand what is more important and help navigate the main ideas. However, you will rarely see the keyword in the text in the same form as in the question. So for example, you have a question about the spending habits of middle-aged people in London. So you underline spending habits the middle-aged people as keywords. Chances are you will not see the same wording in the passage. Most likely, when reading the text, you'll encounter something about the expenditure patterns of adults in their 40s and 50s. 
While the main idea of these sentences is the same, the vocabulary is different. Therefore, you must be on the lookout for similar main ideas between the text and the questions. Mind the context, meanings and of course synonyms, because the majority of ideas are paraphrased and do not appear the same throughout the passage and tasks. And the last tip, leave difficult questions to the end. If you concentrate on questions that you find hard at the beginning, you will waste valuable exam time and find yourself short of it for the rest of the questions. So as a result, you will not be able to answer all the easier questions and subsequently lose points. If you don't know the right answers to some questions, can't anticipate them and generally have no idea what the questions are about, leave them and move on. This way, you can focus on all the ones that you do know the answers to and finish them swiftly. You can return to the difficult questions at the end if you have time. Never leave any blanks in your answer sheet though. You are not penalized for wrong answers, meaning that your points are not deducted, so it's always worth a try. Maybe your guess will be correct. Now, it's no surprise that you want to get the reading mistakes guide I told you about. It contains even more practical tips from my experience on how to score high in reading. Remember, to receive this gift, follow me on Instagram and send me the key phrase, reading mistakes, in the direct messages. Simple. Thank you for spending your time productively with me today. You can find even more videos about IELTS preparation on my channel. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!